Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. Um, I actually wanted to talk about the process of getting on the plane and the procedure of getting through the airport when going to Korea. Now, just a disclaimer that this may be a little bit different to you depending on like what country you're coming from and since COVID it's still developing and we don't know what's going to happen. Um, just make sure and verify that this information is still the same for you because it may be different depending on when you're coming and you know you never know it could change tomorrow it could change next week so just make sure you verify the information that way it's up to date for you and that way your journey and your trip to Korea will be a lot more smoother um, so I actually flew from Orlando International Airport and had a layover in Atlanta for an hour and then from Atlanta I flew to Korea for 14 hours um, I flew through Delta, um, so when I checked my bag in, my bag went directly from Orlando to Korea, so I didn't have to worry about, like, going back out and, like, rechecking my bags or anything like that, um, which is good. And another thing I will say with Delta is, you know, they board the plane from the last row to the first row to minimize too much contact and too many people being right next to each other or ho hovering over each other. The same with when they deboard the plane. They deboard it from the front and then work their way back. Um, personally, I thought that was a really good idea. It made me feel a lot more safe and secure during that whole process. So, you know, check and see what airline that you're flying through, how they do that process, and if you're okay with the way that they do it. Um, of course, when flying, even domestically, you need to wear a mask at all times. And if you have a face shield, I definitely recommend that, you know, stay as safe as you can, have hand sanitizer with you, sanitize your hands, wash your hands, be as safe as you possibly can, even though you're in an airport with a lot of people. Um, so when I got to Atlanta after my overlay was over and it was time for me to board the plane to get ready to go to Korea, they call us up again by sections with priority seating and people with disabilities and children going first, of course, like in any situation. And when it was my time to board, of course, we had to stay socially distant, six feet apart at all times. And one by one, you know, they would check our temperature before we could even go to get on the plane. Um, and if you don't have a fever, then you are obviously OK to get on the plane. And once you get to the front of the plane and you're getting ready to like go and find your seat, they look at your ticket, tell you where you need to go. And then they give you like a little disinfecting wipe in those little pouches. I don't exactly know what they're called. Um, that way, when you sit down, you can take it and like sanitize your surroundings, like the TV thing and like your seat, your armrest, you know, things like that to make you feel a little more safe and secure. Um, as some of you may know that when getting on a plane, basically domestically and internationally, there's only allowed to be two people per row. So one person sits by the window and one person sits by the aisle. And that's the same for each and every aisle, of course. Um, one thing I will say, however, is when I was going from Atlanta to Korea, I sat by myself, which was, you know, good for me. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, of course, like even when flying internationally, it's a much longer flight. You do need to keep your mask on at all times. It's not up for discussion and they will remind you to make sure that you have your mask on. So please keep your mask on. Um, but, you know, of course, on a longer flight like that, they do serve you food and like refreshments and things like that. So that would be the only time that you could actually take off your mask is to eat and then, you know, drink water or whatever you're drinking when they come around. Towards the end of the flight, they would pass out different forms that you need to fill out before arriving at the airport. So the first form that they give you, of course, they give it to you all at the same time. But the first form that I can remember that they gave me was the health declaration form, which it basically has different symptoms related to COVID-19. And you would just check the box if that's a symptom, symptom that you've had in the last 14 days. If you did not have any symptoms you would not check any of the boxes but you would sign your name at the bottom you know basically stating that you did not have those symptoms and you're telling the truth 
Another form that they give you is a travel declaration form, which basically talks about in the last 14 days, same as the health form, where have you been? Like what other countries have you been to in the last 14 days prior to coming to Korea? Um, and of course they have the usual forms where it talks about like where you'll be staying and the phone number to contact you and things like that. And on the back of one of the forms, it tells you the app that you need to download for quarantine and temperature related purposes, which I'll talk about later on. When you first get off the plane, you know, when you first land, if you didn't already download the app prior to coming to Korea, which I did because I already knew about the app, um, while you're getting ready to get ready to deboard the plane, that is something that you need to download. Of course, the first section that you go to after getting off the plane is actually the app where you make sure that you downloaded the right app and then you will basically enter like where you'll be staying for quarantine if you're not staying in the government facility that they provide you um, that you also have to pay for which i think it's roughly about two thousand dollars to stay in a government facility at the airport well i don't know if it's at the airport but you know um, but for me i was not staying in that type of facility so i needed to enter like where i was staying and I had to put down a contact information of the person who was basically overseeing my stay. Um, so after you go through that process, if you have any questions, there will be someone there, of course, ready to answer those questions that you may have and help in making sure that everything on the app basically looks okay. Then the next session, section you will go to is basically verifying that information. And if you're coming with a long-term visa, they will basically ver verify like your visa that you have and then they will actually call the person that you listed on the form basically to verify the information as well. Um, and then after that, you will go through uh, other processes where you'll sign a form saying that you will stay in quarantine either in a government provided facility or in a place that you'll be staying, you know, not related to like the whole airport facility thing. Um, and you basically sign that form stating if you break any of those rules and statements that you know that you need to comply to, like not leaving your facility at any time, not having anyone over, and basically saying that you will enter your symptoms every day for the next 14 days, twice a day in the app um, without, you know, without any issues that you can control, basically. Um, and you sign that form saying basically if you break it that you will be responsible for all the costs and fees related to um the chance of you getting COVID-19 because you broke the rules and risk the chance of being deported as well um and basically the app i will insert it somewhere <laughs> um basically you have a few questions it talks about like whether you have a fever like what's your temperature which you'll get a thermometer after you get your first COVID test at least i did can't say the same for anyone else but for me i got a thermometer but i also bought one in advance because i knew i would probably need to put my temperature in but basically it asks if you have a fever do you have a sore throat um headache i think and then how does your body feel? Does your body feel weak, tired, achy, you know, stuff like that. But again, I'll insert it so you can see it because I think I'm a little bit off. Um, and the app actually tracks your location. And if you have an iPhone, you know, at the top, that little blue, it'll show you at all times that it's tracking your location. Be aware that it does drain your battery faster because it's always running in the background. So just make sure that your phone is always charged because if your phone goes off or for some reason, something like that, your person that's in charge of like making sure that you are where you're supposed to be they will call you and contact you to make sure that you are where you're supposed to be um and for me like my app has actually messed up a few times by saying that i was somewhere when i was not i was actually where i needed to be and the person who oversees me actually texted me and it's like hi where are you are you still at so and so and things like that um just to verify my location um and yeah, uh, so basically when you sit down and they call and you get through that process where you sign the paper and things like that, you finally, you know, get out of that and you can finally go to like the main part of the airport. Of course, everything is organized and you need to follow a path. You cannot break the path. You have to stay on this path during the whole time. And when, you know, when you finally are able to leave the airport, you can't just leave. 
you know you have to stay in a certain area um of course people have different tags i guess i don't know exactly what those tags mean um but i'm pretty sure one of them indicates that you will be quarantining within the government facility and of course in that case you would go from a different you would go to a different section versus the people who are actually being picked up and are leaving you know via taxi or family member or something like that um so like for me i was being picked up um so i had to wait for my person to come and get me and they have a section where people can sit down and wait for those people uh, my person was already there so they basically just let them know like hey i'm here to pick so and so up i went with them and then i was on my way to um the city that i'm staying in to quarantine for 14 days which i currently am my quarantine ends october 1st so just three more days <laughs> um and yeah that's pretty much it um you cannot leave your room of course like i've already mentioned you have to stay there at all times and check your symptoms twice a day once in the morning once at night and yeah um i know it sounds very complicated and no one wants to quarantine for two weeks but you know you have to remain safe and healthy um not only for yourself but for other people so I can say that quarantine really isn't that bad. Of course, I'm still a student, so I have online work that I need to do and preparing for the things that I will be doing after quarantine. Um, so I was able to stay busy that way, but I will also be doing a vlog that kind of shows what I'm doing. So maybe that will help you see that it's not as boring as it seems. Um, oh, also another thing I forgot to mention is that you get tested for COVID two times. Well, at least I had to. Um, so I got tested for COVID when I first arrived, um, just to verify that I didn't already have COVID. And I was tested again today uh, before I leave to verify that I still don't have COVID. Um, so just be prepared for that. If you've never had a COVID test before, you definitely will be getting one now. Um, I hope this video was able to help you in some type of way and give you um, kind of a glimpse of basically what you're going to be going through to some extent. And if you like this video and like to see more videos, please subscribe to my YouTube page, which is down below. Um, make sure to leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in Korea. And if you'd like to know like basically what I'm doing and things like that. Um, until next time. Bye.